Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special Hubble 25th anniversary edition of our Hubble Hangout. My name is Tony Darnell. I work at the Space Telescope Science Institute. And this week, we've got sl something slightly different planned. Uh, as you've already noticed, this is a Friday and not a Thursday, but it's also a very important day. Today marks 25 years of the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting over the Earth. And we've been celebrating it all week. Yesterday, was a, the, the Institute was full of activities, all kinds of really fun things. And we, throughout the year, we've been doing uh, social media activities and things like that. And so it's been a real whirlwind of activity. The show of support to, for, the, for the telescope from the public has really literally been overwhelming. I've been monitoring Twitter on my tweet deck, and it's more like a, it's been like an odometer with all of the tweets going. Oh, on. it's been it's been absolutely. I I can't keep up with it, and I try really. I know hard it, got, it got to a point where I just couldn't do it. So next week I'm going to be getting some statistics on some of this to see what happened. But it, I want to thank you all so much for the warm messages of, of congratulations and and support for this wonderful telescope. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a minute and just kind of appreciate uh, Hubble in a variety of ways. What we're hoping is that while we're on the Hangout, we'll get a lot of interaction from you guys. We hope that you will uh, chat with us and talk with us and tell us what, what Hubble means to you uh, because we'd love to hear it and we'd like to talk about it today. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll let, Scott, do you want to tell people how they can interact with us? Yeah, so the, the best way for you to interact with us, since you're watching us on YouTube, and is on the very bottom left, you'll see some gold lettering there. It says that we're answering questions, and it opens up the Q&A app, and it gives you a brand new experience. You can ask us questions, but also make comments. And what we're really asking for today is, how has the Hubble Space Telescope impacted you? Has it inspired you in any ways? And we have two amazing, or three amazing guests with us that created something through the inspiration from the Hubble Space Telescope, but we want to hear from you and how that's inspired you. So you can do that there with the Q&A app on YouTube and Google+. You can leave uh, regular comments on YouTube and also in our event page. And I'll try very hard to monitor uh, Twitter with our hashtag I've, Hubble I've, Hangout. Yeah, the hashtag Hubble Hangout. I'm monitoring that too, so right. we'll I'll be able to do that. So I, I have Hubble 25 up too, but um, that is a whirlwind of everything that everyone is celebrating. If if you want to, I recommend going through that hashtag just to see all the amazing announcements going on. But for this show, we are going to be going over the Hubble Hangout hashtag, which is seen below out in Tony's lower third. Wonderful. Thank you, Scott. And uh, we're joining us, as she does every week, uh, is Dr. Carol Christian. She is the HS, the Hubble Space Telescope Outreach Project Scientist. Welcome, Carol. Hello. It's been a week, huh? Um, yeah, and it's not over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's, so let me go ahead and get started. Joining me here at the Institute is Georgia Bladen. She is the Hubble uh, 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 press information officer for the uh, Hubble Space Telescope for ESA, the European Space Agency, and she ran the, uh, she was in charge of the Ode to Hubble video contest. So welcome, Georgia. It's great to have you. Thank you very much. So tell it's us about the con. Tell us about your experience. How did it go? It was fantastic. To sum up, I wanted to just thank everyone who sent in a video, everyone who did took place in the crowd voting. I was absolutely blown away. Uh, having the opportunity to watch all of the submitted videos, which I did, um, was incredible. Time took a lot of time, but it was so rewarding because the amount of love and energy that people have put into creating these videos was, well, it just blew me away. Um, so we started this competition back in February. Right, I remember. Uh, opened up the entries then, and since then we had a whole bunch of entries. These were then shortlisted by you guys, the public, the community, on social media, on our website. Now, how did that work? You had people just, you had them all listed and they just liked it on Facebook? Is that what they did? Or, Essentially, and you counted used, the number of likes? Yeah, we used a program for it where it displays all of the entries in the two categories because we had the under 25s, the uh, born in Hubble's lifetime, as you will. And the Hubble the, generation. The Hubble generation. <laughs> and then you had the over 25s. So for each of those, it displays all of the videos. And yeah, you had to be logged into Facebook and then you liked them. And the six with the highest likes in both of the categories were then shortlisted. Um, and those were judged by our panel of judges, which was a mixture of scientists, uh, science outreach professionals, uh, artists, there were four of them in all, 
So a really mixed judging group, and in the end, as of today, we have two winning videos. Um, one from each category. One from each category. Uh, and uh, so let's. Let, why don't we go ahead and get started? We're gonna let's start with. Uh, we have the winners here. They both agreed to join us in their hangout. I'm so excited they did. Uh, I'm gonna let George introduce them, and uh, we'll, and at, what we're going to do is we're going to start after the introductions, and we're going to take a look at each video. So first, we have the winner of our over 25s category. Um, with a beautiful, beautiful video which you're about to see um, using, well, actually, you talk about it yourself. So here is, I hope I get this right, uh, Desiree. So if you could introduce yourself and just tell us a bit about your you and your video. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am delighted to be here. It's an honor to me you have invited me. <laughs> anyway, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to to participate to, to this Havel Hangout. And I would like uh, to congratulate the other contest winner um, because I really enjoyed their, their video too. I was really um, <laughs> Well, um, my video is divided into, into parts. In the first part, I make a little reflection on the effect that Havel discoveries had on me. And in the second part, I show uh, of my own, uh, a sequence of my own creation photograph that we are inspired um, by Havel images. Wonderful. I, I I'm gonna I have some comments that I'm going to make after we watch it. But uh, Scott's getting it queued up for us now, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll ask you some more about it. Okay? Are you ready, Scott, or do you need some more time? Okay. okay. All right.
Wow, that was absolutely stunning. Nice, beautiful. That was amazing. Congratulations. That is an outstanding video. So you also composed the music for that, correct? Yes. I, I have a, a band in the past, uh, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep some song from that time. Wow, it was absolutely beautiful. I tell you, I, I, when, when we got to the end of the first part, I actually got a little uh, lump in my throat. And I had a real <laughs> emotional reaction, that part about you know our, our place, uh, our, our home in the universe. That was an amazing part for me. It was really, it really affected me. And that's how you know you've got it, because I've made one or two videos in my time. And, and when, you, when you can get an emotional reaction from something you've watched, that's hard to do. That's when you know you, you've hit it. You've really done the, you've gotten it right. And uh, I felt that way right in the, at the end of that first part. Now, uh, in the, the, uh, you're also a photographer, correct? Those were your photographs? Uh, yes. I um, I'm, I was doing the photograph when the, the contest appears. Then I thought that it's a, a good uh, change to, to, to participate with my photograph. That, and did you look at the, with, with respect to the Hubble images, did you see the Hubble image and then try to recreate that somehow with photography? Or did you already have some images and tried to match them up with things that, uh, that you thought would be a good match with, with Hubble photographs or for Hubble images? Mm. Well, uh, when I discovered the uh, how it matches, um, was very revealing to me um, because um, I discovered that the universe was changing constantly. Um, so I decided to make some Hubble images with movement shot to do uh, the collection by Rionic. Oh, that's outstanding! Wow, that's a, the the uh, the ones with the uh, that where you matched up the um, uh, the Hubble the the Horsehead Nebula. I thought was was right on. Those those were really great photos. Yeah. And as someone that I I love doing photography myself, I was blown away by your photography skills as well as I I make videos. And like you're blending in the two things that really are passionate to me, and I really really love the way that it came out. So I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was really good. I'm happy that you have enjoyed it as much as I did creating it. <laughs> Do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Um, I understand that this is like a selection, that you actually have more photographs. Um, so the Baryonica Bar yes. collection is actually larger? Yes. The total has uh, 20 photographs, wow. but in the video, to, to do the, the assembling, I need to concentrate on the <laughs> photos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I choose the, the best, I think. <laughs> do you have any, are, are, are you a, uh, an artist by trade? Do you, do you do this for a living, or do you do, some, do, you do, uh, do you have a day job? That's what we could call it in America. Do you have a job that isn't a, being an artist? Like a hobby. Uh, it's like a hobby. I a hobby? work like receptionist in my free time. I, I take photographs and, and I make music <laughs> in, in the other uh, hobby. <laughs> You've got a real future uh, as an artist if you choose to, to <laughs> pursue that even stronger. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Well, yeah, con con congratulations, Disarray. We appreciate you uh, you you showing up for our hangout, uh, and, and uh, you're going to get an amazing prize. What did, what do they win, by the way? We didn't talk about that. Oh yeah, oh, yes. I'm so jealous. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, we're all jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you saw the anniversary image uh, yesterday that was uh, released. Uh, we've got you guys both a uh, mounted image on like metal of that of that <laughs> image. It's really, really high quality. And on the back yesterday, we, we skipped around and we got some astronauts and uh, some astronomers who work here on Hubble uh, to sign the back. So that's signed by astronauts and astronomers. And then we've also got, which is really special, um, these pieces of the first solar array from Hubble. Uh, so that was there from 1990 till 1993 on Hubble. Um, and then it was brought down to Earth. And we've got these little bits of that solar array mounted in perspex. Um, 
So it's literally a piece of Hubble that spent three years in space uh, in a little bit of plastic. Um, so, and they look really price. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so those are coming your way. So I hope you have somewhere. Yeah, they're somewhere really cool. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they really are all very jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely... Um, can, can I change my contract and negotiate my bonus? Yeah, really. Is that yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you that it was quite a madhouse yesterday, but we we got we got um, the astronauts to sign, so it was great. That was all Carol, actually. She really manhandled astronauts. Oh, I did. Yeah, so I shoved them around for. Well, which that's is worse than hurdling cats, right? Yeah, that's actually Carol's day job. That's her day job. <laughs> my day job. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing astronauts around. Go here, go here, sit down, sign this. <laughs> <laughs> Desiree, congratulations and thank you for, for, uh, yeah. for taking part in the contest. Yes, congratulations. Yeah. Okay, so, let's, so now the Hubble generation. What do we mean by that, Georgia? Uh, people who were born in Hubble's lifetime. Never known a world without Hubble. So the winners in that category are? Are Haley and Martin. Congratulations. Hi, guys. Congratulations. You don't know a world without Hubble. Does that mean anything to you? Can't imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. Now, what's great about Hubble is that it was designed to be serviced by the space shuttle, and, and, and it's probably unique in almost anything we've ever put in space because I don't know if there's very, been very many other things like that that's been designed to be uh, uh, grabbed and put and, and fixed and upgraded throughout the years, which is why it's been up there so long. Uh, we don't do that with, as far as I know, any other thing. Maybe Carol can correct me if I'm wrong. But um, And so that's why it's lasted for 25 years, and we actually have a Hubble generation. So why don't you introduce, or you, do you want to, should we just get to the video? Well, Talk I think you should introduce your oh, video. Yeah, why don't you, oh, good yeah. idea. That's a better yeah. idea. Tell us about Hallie your Martin, video. Tell <laughs> us about your video. Um, okay, our video is... Um, I guess it has like some stop motion to it. We have photos though, that Hubble took, and it basically goes through uh, how we started seeing the stars from sort of like from the ground. We couldn't get up there. We were able, able to paint, and how through science and through Hubble, eventually step by step, we were able to actually have a set of eyes in space to see the universe. It's truly. And, I guess that's part of it, that since we've never experienced a world without Hubble in our lifetimes, then seeing, like, that's where we were kind of thinking, is, like, what were people thinking about the universe before Hubble and, and successive discoveries before that? Yeah, so now, while, while Scott gets it ready for us to, to watch, I want to remind everybody that I put the links to both of these videos on the description box. So it's in the description box of this Hangout, so you can watch them both on YouTube. Also, uh, because it'll be slightly better quality, because we're rebroadcasting, it's going to maybe, maybe be a little bit more uh, jerky in the uh, video uh, than it would be if you watched it on YouTube. So I encourage you to go straight to the videos themselves and check them out as well. And Scott, whenever you're ready, we can maybe take a look at the, uh, at the second at the, the winner of the Hubble Generation category.
Incredible. Yay. Bravo. Very well Thanks done. Guys. Very well Thanks done, guys. So my, my very first question is, I got to know, how long did that take to do? I, mean, <laughs> I guess two solid days. Two solid days. We had two solid days. And no way. I don't believe it. Not for a second. It had to have taken longer than that. That, that, that was That's the shooting. That's just the shooting alone. Uh, Haley did a week of prep <laughs> with all the artwork. She drew, like, the telescope. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how about this? You guys get a piece of the solar array. I want pieces of your artwork. That's yeah. right. You need to, you need to <laughs> it. Those are yeah. solar artifacts too now. Those are amazing. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah, you could. You could sell those on eBay. I love that. Beautiful work. Beautiful yeah, work. Yeah, that was my favorite part is the Hubble <laughs> to go into the telescope. That was great. <laughs> Very good. How do you do that? Do you just do you have like a black background or, or what? Um, for which scene again? How do, for any of it. How do you do it? What's for the technique? Thing. Uh, well, essentially, for everything that was like hand animation, we built a black box of foam core. So we had like a roof and then like, you know, the sides and the back. And then we create, like, we cut a little hole in the ceiling of that little black box, and then we had like a light going through. So it was almost like a stage atmosphere where, uh, as soon as like one, it looks like this. So say, stop motion of Hubble. Here he is. There's this platform. There's a stick, and then he's just mounted on this. As soon as he comes from the black box, like from behind, to like that point where the light is coming through in the hole, it's almost like a stage. So then it can create a dynamic. Sort of area where like their characters, so to speak, come in and out. That's <laughs> 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 great. That with like uh, some videos from like the NASA hub like, uh, site and such. So I loved all of that, but I have to say, I my know, it's like it's an old classic technique, though. Yeah. That is what's so amazing about it. That's I mean, people used to do puppetry and things like that. It's fantastic. And yeah. I, I love the way that you guys did the fly through of the ultra deep field. Yes. In, in analog, that was fantastic. I, that's my, I think that was my favorite part of it. Is like I I've used that footage all the time in many videos I make, and I'm seeing it now in a completely different way. It made me rethink it. And I really well, Tony it. must be happy that both of you, I mean, you know, both videos had a whole deep field because Tony loves hey, the whole deep I, field. So in both important. videos, we have a whole deep field. That's right, Carol. You're going to get the message sooner <laughs> later. Important <laughs> image ever take. <laughs> so, well, my favorite part, even with all of that, was still was the was the whiteboard parts where you actually injected a bit of perspective into it. That, that's very nice. That yeah. I think was my absolute favorite part because to provide perspective the way you did by like having that hand up there and then drawing how many galaxies might be in there was really well done, and uh, that was my favorite part. So. Um, I think that's the part that gives you that lump when you want to throw it again. Yeah. Yeah. So your video did that as well. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the way you gave it perspective and scale and you really come away feeling like you've experienced something quite special. Like, so. De like Desiree, you, you've, got, you've got a future in art. So what do you guys do in, in, your, real, in, your, in your actual non-making video time? <laughs> Can't say I would. Um, Are you students? Are you? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I need all their... Oh, their hobby, or oh, their contest. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Hubble gets to third, we'll start it. Well, Carol, Carol, it's our turn. Isa did one. Now we've got to do something. Now we have to do another. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you guys know. What about you guys, Hallie, uh, or Haley and Martin? What do you guys do? Um, I'm a camera not assistant. Not making videos. <laughs> huh? I'm a camera assistant in the film industry. Oh, ah. you already working. Ah. Oh. <laughs> This I usually take notes though and like slate. <laughs> so. Good for you. Good for you. What about you, Martin? Uh, I I work uh, part time in the film industry, but uh, I'm in school now for uh, astronomy. Oh, awesome. Great. Where do you oh, go? Where do you go? Uh, it's St. Mary's University in Halifax. Well, good luck oh, with that. Man. Yes, that's a great major. We actually have a plan for the uh, piece of the solar panel. There's a observatory here that does public tours, and we're gonna display it there so families can come and everybody can just see something. Oh, that's nice. That's so great of you guys. Yeah, wow. that's great. That's amazing. Thank that's you. really wonderful. I was gonna ask you what you were gonna do with it. There you go. Okay. Well, I want to thank all of the winners. You guys are. 
truly inspirational. Thank you for sharing your video with us. Desiree, Haley, Martin, thank you for joining us in this Hangout. Uh, congratulations to all three of you. Yeah, well done. Very nice. Excellent. Thank you very much for all of <laughs> all right, you guys, are welcome, you guys are welcome to stay, or you you can hang out with us for a little bit longer. But uh, again, I just want to give my congratulations. I'm reminding everybody, go see. I've posted all these videos all over the place. They're on our Twitter page. By the way, if you're not following us on Twitter at Hubble Telescope, you need to go to Twitter right now, type that in, and click follow. You also need to subscribe to us on Hubble Site Channel on YouTube. Um, it's because we are. We are all over the place on uh, in in the in the internet sphere. So we hope you'll follow us, and, and uh, we'll let you know everything interesting that's going on about Hubble. So the uh, I've posted the links to their all of their videos here, and uh, we want and you can check them out, watch them as many times as you want. And yeah. was it a success, Georgia? I think you only have to watch those videos. To, <laughs> yeah, I mean, judge for yourselves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there were so many. I mean, honestly, I I was looking at you know just just a short list because I don't have a lot of time but I was looking and there were so many great submissions I, I don't know how you guys were able to choose the best I mean I mean and it, you guys did an amazing job there were just so many amazing things that came through so I, I want to applaud all the people that made their submissions because it really it inspired me just seeing all these different contexts of the way that Hubble has, in, has inspired them and really kind of just rejuvenated some of my creative mind as well with the things that I create. Yeah. And that's worth mentioning, actually. First of all, yes, definitely worth thanking everyone on the shortlist as well. Um, but we will also be putting all the rest of the videos on the Space Telescope website. Um, Spacetelescope.org? Spacetelescope.org. We'll be putting those all up in the next couple of weeks so that you can browse through all of them because... We just want to acknowledge everyone who entered a video because they were all fantastic. They all had their own little flair, their own little take on what Hubble had done and what Hubble meant to them. So we will be putting them all up to acknowledge all of those as well. Yes. So. And, you know, I think at this – well, let me – actually, before I get there, I want to – a couple of comments. Michael, Michael Jobin on the Q&A app uh, comments real quick that the, uh, the deep field images are what the HST is, I think, all about. Are you listening, Carol? Uh, Carol? And the, the others of nebula and galaxies could be done by smaller space telescopes. Well, that's not fair, Michael. I mean, come on. The, 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 they could be done by space telescopes, yes, but not at the resolution and clarity with which Hubble gives to us. So there's always the atmosphere in the way with ground-based telescopes. Hubble is uniquely perched above us to not have to do that. But yes, I couldn't agree more. The Hubble deep field is what Hubble will go. There's no bias at all. <laughs> Getting tired of hearing that, Carol. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, do you want to say something? I was just going to say, I reckon a good, I haven't actually counted, but I reckon a good 80% plus of the Ode to Hubble videos that came in had the deep field video. Ah. <laughs> so there was a bit it of a bias. It definitely inspires people. Yeah, well, I don't, yeah. I mean, we've talked about it so many times. It, it's, it's truly, I, next to the video that, that uh, these guys have made, nothing really gives us that much perspective other than looking at that image. I mean, it really shows you how, what our place is in the universe. So um, uh, one of the things, Carol, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, but I'd kind of like to bring up the subject of the sort of partner multinational partnership that is part of Hubble's mission. Um, one of the things I've discovered this week is that working with Georgia and, and uh, with the guys over at NASA Goddard is that you know, you see all these things like spacetelescope.org, uh, hubblesite.org, uh, Hubble and uh, there's also a Goddard a Hubble page. These are all parallel uh, so social streams that kind of highlight the partnership that we have in this mission. Um, for example, George is in charge of the uh, European Space Agency component of Hubble Outreach. And so what I think, you know, if you look at our Twitter page, you'll see things like our Twitter handles. You'll see three different Twitter uh, feeds, for example. You'll see ours, Hubble, space te Hubble Telescope. Yours is Hubble Space. Hubble right? underscore space. Un sub Hubble underscore space. And then there's another one that NASA Goddard runs, NASA Goddard. And so there are three streams. All of them are verified. We're all real. We're all part of the Hubble mission. But we all tell a slightly different story. And Carol, I wonder if you want to talk a little bit about the multinational nature of the mission. Well, I, I think starting with the social media side, um, we always get frustrated because sometimes people say, why do you have so many streams? But you, you point out something interesting is that 
each one of these sources of information has a different perspective. And so it gives you a different way of looking at the mission and how it affects society. So I think that's, that's pretty important, that we don't just have... I mean, it's wonderful to live in an environment in which you're, we're not only getting the NASA point of view. We're getting, you know, public's point of view and ESA's point of view and um, lots of different perspectives on the telescope, what people are using it to do and how it affects them. Um, the other thing is I think that the international co cooperation and this, both the science, well, the science is really multinational. Um, any more big programs have many many people on them I'm part I'm actually part of the team that did the anniversary image and we're multinational um, and s some of the other programs that are being pursued to use t Hubble and other telescope data um, are certainly multinational in the early days of Hubble it used to be kind of small teams and one or two uh, collaborators, but now we need so much expertise that uh, that people who do different things and have different perspective on the data and how to process it and and um, how to model it and all that. It's it's very important from the science side. From the technical side, it's also important as well because we have instruments and the Canadian arm and um, and uh, we really need those cooperations between the US, Europe, Canada, and any of the other partners we can partner with. Because, again, it's a different technological perspective, but then integrating it together gives everybody a piece of the action. And so, um, you know, and nations uh, have an affinity with the telescope because they have a part of it. So I think it's, it's uh, really great, like this, the solar panels. I, I can tell you my hat is off to ESA for, for chopping it up into pieces. I couldn't believe it when I was told that was happening. That would never happen in NASA. They would rather warehouse it than chop, chop it into little pieces. And I think it's great to return to the public, you know, in displays and other means, um, pieces of this telescope. So it's very cool. I, like I think it. you hit a, a really good point that I really agree with too. Is when you're talking about these different perspectives, and really that that is what science is. We're we're trying to understand what's going on there, but it 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 is storytelling. We're telling the story of what's going on in the universe, and we're all going to have different ways of finding out those answers and and being able to bounce those ideas off. And I think it's extremely important that it's not just coming from one place, but it's coming from a global community. Uh, of astronomers and engineers and astrophysicists that are able to look at the universe in a, in a different way with the same amazing instrument. And I, I, I've just, I've been going over um, for the past few weeks just some of the different papers and stuff like that. And we have, what, 12,700 academic papers that have come from the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's from people from all over the world. And that's extremely important that it's made such a huge impact on our knowledge of the universe as a species over this past quarter century. I, I, yes, and I have a great appreciation for the scientific output since I'm supposed to at least read the abstracts of every paper and it's more than two a day. And it's more than I... I mean, it's really a fire hose of information <laughs> <laughs> of things that are being discovered. And um, we just... We've just completed a week of a conference um, looking at not only what Hubble has uh, produced in the past, but looking forward. Where, what is it going to do in the future, and then how is it going to be in synergy with the James Webb, and then from there, James Webb will take over when Hubble is no longer operating. And there's just some amazing science that has been done. And the great two, mes two big messages is that the longevity of the telescope is very important because... Um, you know, when I was in fourth grade, it was all about taking snapshots and trying to model that. But since the telescope has been consistently in orbit, and it's so well calibrated that it's possible to compare the very first observations of an object with those that were taken last week, you can see um, changes in astronomical objects, uh, and that can be modeled, and we're really understanding a lot more about the universe because of that very consistent data set. 
Um, and whereas when you have other telescopes in the mix, that's great, and it augments the entire picture, but having one telescope that's been doing all these observations is really invaluable. Okay. So the, uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, let everybody know is I want to remind everybody that uh, you can, we're hoping you'll, you'll leave us some comments and questions throughout this Hangout so that we can talk a little bit more. Please, uh, please tell us what you think about Hubble and the uh, impact it's had on your life. Um, Carol, let's, I want to ask you a little bit about the uh, anniversary image. Uh, yesterday yeah. that was, I was at the museum yesterday, and I think yeah. Scott has a, has a very nice yeah. representation of it as well, and so while he's queuing that up, Yesterday at the museum, at a museum at uh, in Washington D.C. at about 9 a.m., Administrator Bolden and John Grunsfeld un unveiled an image that celebrates 25 years of Hubble. You want to talk about it a little bit, Carol? Sure. Um, I do want to mention that also in January we revealed a, a precursor anniversary image of the favorite M16, the pillars, which also uh, were in the the videos that we saw and many other videos. Um, with an infrared view. And the point was we had taken the M M16, the Eagle Nebula, the Pillars of Creation a long time ago with the original camera, and now we've recently observed it. Just to show that the telescope really has improved, it has much greater capability, and to show the comparison of the visual with the infrared. So for the anniversary itself, we wanted to kick off the year with the M16 because it's such a legacy, Pillars of Creation is a legacy, iconic image. That's right. That, we did that back in January, if you remember. Right. And the anniversary image, which uh, Scott is showing, and this is an, uh, I'm actually on the science team for this, and it, it's, an, uh, it's just an amazing region. Um, so what, what you're seeing is a star cluster. That's all the bright, concentrated uh, stars, um, more or less in the center of the image. Uh, and what happens here is this star cluster is not very old, a couple of million years old. And what happens is the gas and the dust that you kind of see off to the side, that material condenses, um, collapses due to its gravity, and sometimes you can have shocks where clouds run into each other and they compress. And what happens is in the center of that, depending on how much material is there, how uh, violent the collapse and how strong the gravity due to the amount of material, um, you can get a large or small star cluster. So this is a healthy star cluster. It's not the biggest star cluster we've ever seen, um, but it's very healthy. And the reason that the stars are different uh, brightnesses is because they are different masses. And so the different ma the brightest ones are the biggest mass. Um, and But you can also see this plethora of very tiny, um, fainter stars that are less than the mass of the sun. The interesting thing is that that cluster, those bright stars in the cluster, have blown away and basically carved out, away from the material out of which they were born, the, uh, the, the cloud, and what you see is a residual. So some of that stuff is being blown back, and that's why you see those finger protrusions, which we've seen in many nebula. And that means that the light is carving out and blowing back um, the material, and so the fingers are more dense than the surrounding area, and so it kind of um, pushes away some of the uh, lighter, more diffuse material. And the different colors represent um, the reason that we use these colors is, first of all, we want to show the colors of the stars. And it's a balance of how to do the image processing. The first thing you want to notice that the little red, the little stars are red. That's because they are cooler than the bright bluish stars. And the second thing is that there are also some observations using very narrow bands that sample carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and those cause the nebula to be, be um, the, it, it emits in those different wavelengths, and that tells you something about its comp composition. So there's a lot of astrophysics going on in this picture, and um, in addition, on the website, there is a movie of this region that our folks have done uh, and which is just spectacular. Yeah. And I just wanted to, to mention one other surprising result. Westerland 2 has been known for a long time. It was named after a guy named Westerland who discovered it looking at photographic plates. This cluster is actually two clusters. There's one behind the other. And um, 
uh, there is a paper, a scientific paper coming out about the fact that there are two clusters and in fact overnight after the party last night one of our astronomers sent to our deputy director a whole theory about the two clusters and how the bow shock from the one went to the other and all that. So, you know, he was thinking about this as soon as he saw the image, right? Because he, he isn't—he does that kind of work, but he's actually not on the team. So he immediately created a model yesterday afternoon about <laughs> about how this whole thing works. So it's actually two clusters, one in front of the other. Um, they appear to be very close to the same age, um, but it it is suggestive that one cluster, perhaps the smaller cluster, triggered the formation of the larger one, um, which is which is nearer to us. So it's a very, very interesting cluster and a lot of this was a complete surprise to us because it had never been studied very well before. But it was a, a great choice for the program. We got the observations and once we got the observations last fall, we all kind of went, oh, this is going to be spectacular. So we actually <laughs> augmented the core observations with some others so that we could really enhance the clouds as well. Very nice. So I want to. So I want. I remind everybody you can download this on HubbleSite.org. Also go to Hubble25th.org to get both the image and the uh, video. The video is also posted on YouTube on our Hubble Site channel. Uh, uh, channel. So uh, you check them out and watch them all you want. I'm going to get to a couple comments here. Craig Landon is saying. Um, can't let this anniversary go by without mentioning the Shoemaker-Levy comet collision, the rise of the World Wide Web, allowing us to download the deep field. Remember Netscape? Yeah, sadly I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and the astronomy picture of the day, combining com all combined, allowing us to watch what the scientific world is seeing. That's an excellent point, Craig. It's uh, it's true. Without without the internet, we wouldn't have access to this data so quickly, and the images wouldn't be. Uh, we'd have to m get mailed a picture, I guess, or a, a printed picture or something like yeah. that. So, and uh, and and the Shoemaker Levy comet. Uh, event was one of the most spectacular, wasn't it, Carol? It, it, was, it was quite remarkable and actually it was brought up this week and I wanted to pitch a little bit about the solar system observations that have been done. Um, there have been a lot. The, you know, for a while Hubble was kind of the Mars weather channel, um, but also with the <laughs> ultraviolet capability, no kidding, I mean they actually, before there were um, satellites orbiting Mars, Hubble observations were often used to see where the dust storms were and where um, good locations were for lander, landers. So Hubble actually contributed quite a lot to Mars exploration. Um, but on top of that, observations in the ultraviolet have been done of aurora on several of the planets and in particular Jupiter and Saturn and the amazing thing to me which I guess some of us in the audience remembered um, and some of us did not is that when Shoemaker-Levy hit Jupiter it actually triggered a disruption in Jupiter's magnetic field with, which manifest itself as bright spots in the aurora which I hadn't appreciated it had happened. Usually the auroral field in Jupiter is kind of a circular cap, a bright, and so the, these bright spots show up. Now we've known that bright spots show up also from the interaction between Io um, and the other satellites of Jupiter, but I didn't realize that Jupiter Levy, by hitting the planet, actually disrupted the magnetic field and created a signature way up in the pole of Jupiter. I mean, that stuff. He can't make that stuff up. You could make it up, but it wouldn't be as good. I mean, it's well, John Murphy is commenting the Hubble birthday is the same as mine. Well, happy birthday, Yay! John. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, Ben Gasly, uh, Gasly is, is uh, commenting, the magnificent Hubble deep sky images encouraged me to look further into the science behind them. Since then, I've participated in many online astronomy courses. You know, that's a good point. That's true. It gets people kind of motivated to learn more about this stuff. And people, so even I've, I've heard of people becoming or trying to become astronomers or engineers or something as a result of it. So that's, that's, really, that's yeah. really important, too. Uh, let's see. Um, Michael Jobin, he's asked, he's saying again that I bought a 12-foot C-band satellite Earth station just to see the launch of HST in 1990. That wow. changed my life. <laughs> wow, you are hardcore, you're Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carol, I have a question for you because I've been getting it on social media, and I really don't know the answer to it. One, 
as we were, you know, the, obviously this week there's been a lot of top ten images, top ten this is and that's for Hubble. Uh, is there a top ten list of the the most cite uh, top ten papers of the most uh, th that involve Hubble data, like the most cited, the top ten most cited Hubble pa data papers? Am I asking that in a way that makes yeah. any sense? Yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't have that list on the top of my head, but certainly the um, the whole series of the expansion of the universe, yeah, Reese, uh, of which which I mean, there's a whole series of those papers, and so the one that, got that the was right. that, that was a really a big watershed from the Hubble Deep Field, of course. Um, of course. I'm just saying. And, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I know you are. Um, but then the follow-up on just pandering to you. Don't worry. It's okay. Of the excel acceleration of the universe, for which um, um, the trio, Adam, Brian, and Saul, uh, won the Nobel Prize. So that acceleration of the universe has then spawned a whole industry in dark energy. So they all quote that paper, of course. Right. So that, that's another highly quoted paper. Um, I th there are several in the study of exoplanets where, like the first transit that was observed by Hubble, and also the uh, the other one where Beta Pictoris, where the the actual, and in fact that was in one of the videos, of um, where a planet, the trace of a planet was actually detected by Hubble. Those are kind of iconic papers. I mean, they were hard to do and very speculative at the time, but they are always referenced in the subsequent observations done by Hubble. So those, and so it pretty much covers the gamut um, from from you know the the solar system all the way out. But I would say probably the cosmology stuff is is the most. Yeah. Okay, well, what we should do is, is maybe put that together somewhere, and I should post yeah. it on social media. I have a great question for the contest winners. This is from Cecil Morgan. Actually, <laughs> actually, can I just tell you, the most cited paper is a calibration paper. <laughs> 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 to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> science isn't always exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm remembering this that they picked it science. as a calibration of what picked you or something. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> think about science. Just because it's highly cited doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Well, it's important, but it's important, but it's not a science story at all. Cecil Morgan has asked a great question to our guests. I want, I'd like to get your thoughts. This is a great one. What are the contest winners' favorite HST image? Uh, let me start with you, Desiree. You're muted, so hey. unmute yourself if you could. There's a button at the top. Do you have that? Okay, I'll go to. You're muted. Okay, I'll go to. Let me go to Haley and Martin real quick. What are you guys' favorite HST image? Um, <laughs> I guess I like the, the the one that was just released, the the Hubble 25th anniversary image. More uh, than like. <laughs> yeah, I I cried when I saw it. <laughs> it was so beautiful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just felt really touched by this incredible image. Yeah, they they are they are moving, aren't they? I mean, you see them, and it's like. Take your breath away. So much detail, so so much color, so many different things going on. Yeah. Yeah. Daily yeah. really likes uh, like globular clusters when we look at them. <laughs> in the oh, okay. A woman after my own heart. That's <laughs> my field. I love clusters. Yep. Yeah. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Tony gives me a hard time about it. In fact, everybody does. I'm like, oh, why are we doing that? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, eh. but they're great. They are <laughs> I great. Love clusters. I love clusters. Do you remember how you yeah. described the Hercules? Oh, like uh, fireworks? Frozen in time? <laughs> frozen in time. Fireworks frozen in time. That's how I described Hercules when I first saw it. <laughs> That's beautiful. I didn't know what it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Desiree, do you have a favorite HST image, Hubble image? Mm, I remember that the first uh, image that I, I saw was uh, the pillars of creation. Mm. And it seemed very wonderful, not only because it's beautiful, but also the explanation I found on the Hubble web page. I mean, about how new stars are born there. Yeah, that is one of that has been that's been that's sort of a that image is also kind of an icon of, of Hubble. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a beautiful image. Yeah, that and 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 there is a little, you know, there's a whole like uh, Haley and Martin were saying, there was a whole lot going on in that image too. It's, a, I guess, is that a is that a theme? We try to pick images that where there's just so much going on. <laughs> Carol. No, I think. Um, well, of course, we we look at for images that actually. Well, we have two programs. One is the science program where we do newsworthy things, and the other is heritage where we just pick images that. Uh, are really stunning that we want to show and share with the public. And I think the Heritage Program, which has most of the images that, pe that people think about, except for the Hubble Field, um, uh, are chosen because the nebula are so striking, and each one is different. Even in a class, like Planetary Nebula, they're all different. They're not the same. So it's, like, amazing. Someone's getting scared. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, you know, so we've talked about everyone else. I know we've talked about you and your Hubble Deep Field, so let me put that up, and then I want to hear from you about why it's the most important image to you. So let me screen share this real quick. And so this is, and again, all these images that I'm sharing here, this is on hubble25th.org, so you can see all these images plus any of the associated videos and press releases that go along with them and high-resolution copies. And I believe also, Carol, there are uh, printable PDFs for these images so people can make posters. Is that right? Yes, yes. The Hubble site has um, a place where you can go and print out um, awesome. uh, at yeah. the highest resolution. Yeah. So, Tony, tell me about your love of the Ultra D field, because you've been, well, you've been, you've been kind of subtle I'm about sorry, it. I'm sorry. There are the images you can get in various formats, but on the Hubble, Hubble, Hubble 25th, there are, for those 25 <laughs> images, um, there are poster-ready. Yeah, poster-ready, yeah. not just right. images for framing, but poster-ready. Um, right. Yeah, you can go to a large format printer like someplace, and I can't say names, but you, large. You, we can Kinkos. You can go to Kinkos. <laughs> oh, okay, we can. Okay, I didn't know. We I think can. it's on the website. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you your favorite, down. your favorite so, printer. I was in college when this, when the first Deep Field came out, the very first one, and then uh, I, I, I thought it was great. I, I, I didn't really understand it, and then this came out in, uh, in, uh, two, in was it 2004, and I learned how it was taken, and once I learned how it was taken, and that it was kind of a risky image to make, and we didn't even know what we'd see, and then they looked at this area of the sky for 11 days and, and then saw all these galaxies, it, it literally uh, changed my life. I, 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 I was so inspired by that that I made, I started making videos about it and things like that. It was, a, it was a very humbling image. It was one of the few images that really got me, gave me true perspective about what my place was in the universe, and so that's why it's my favorite and always will be. And I, you know, I will put up what mine is, and I, I, th what I think is my favorite image from all this is the Crab Nebula. So, and then the reason behind this is, let's make sure it gets screen shared properly, um, is this is something that humans saw happen a thousand years ago. So we saw the supernova. So the, well, this is something that with We're actually not seeing it, Scott. We're just seeing your icon. I'm seeing it. Oh, are you? Let me refresh. I that. am. I apologize. I'm seeing it now. Okay. I'm so seeing it. so th this is a supernova remnant. And so the supernova that happened with this was observed by humans. And we've, we've actually, you know, have seen writings about this. And we've been able to study it over time. And, and first of all, it's a beautiful image anyway. But the fact that this is a, a beautiful, wonderful scientific, you know, we can learn a lot of science about what's going on here. But it's happened within the human timeline. And where a lot of the, the other things, like, you know, the, the ultra deep field, which I'm not going to bash or anything like that. But these things are happening billions of years ago. But this is something that happens within the human context and helps us understand and get a, a different timeline of wh what's going on in the universe. So for me, I've always really loved the Crab Nebula because of we as a species can connect to it because we, we've we been able to see it grow over time. And that we don't necessarily get that opportunity with many astronomical images. I know. It, that's the thing that's kind of blown me away about the way that astronomy has exploded this in the past couple of decades. Now we can make movies of things like supernovae and, and um, galaxies rotating and things like that. It's just really amazing. So, Carol, what's your favorite? You see, people ask me that 
Yes. Our news chief just asked me to write that up for somebody, and I said I won't do it, and I won't because I don't have a favorite. I like so many of them that I can't choose one over the other. Um, I, I'm, I They're rather, all your babies? No, They're all you your know, babies. I really like same. Westerland 2, which was released yesterday, no, but you know, I, um, I'm a cluster person, so I tend to like the clusters like NGC 3603, NGC 602. I'm going to throw these numbers out. But I love globular clusters as well. Um, they're very so, globular. Uh, they're great. I love, you know, and then also observing the clusters in other galaxies like M31, M83. So that's kind of my theme is, is okay. clusters. Um, I think the planetary nebula are really fantastic, but if I, I can be pushed into a category, which would be the clusters, but I can't. I can't pick one image because they're all so great for different okay. reasons. Fair enough. Georgia? Yeah, Georgia. Uh, it's all like coming. <laughs> to be honest, I, I really loved the the infrared version of the M16 that we put out in January. So like the pillars right. yep. in infrared, yeah. I thought, when I saw that, I was just, it's an image that you really recognize and it is very iconic. And to see it in that different wavelength gave it just a completely different look, a completely different feel. I thought aesthetically that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the actual feeling that you get when you look at something, I think the ultra deep field is... Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you okay. Do a I was, dance? Yeah, I was. I was gonna say. See, so some of it is since I've been within with Heritage for long, so long. You know, some of it is actually the whole process of arguing over getting the images and exactly what filters to take and all that. The other one was the horse head. The horse head was a stunner. When we did it, we had many arguments about yeah. how we were going to do that image, and in the end, we threw all our eggs in the infrared basket. And when we took it. We had all these arguments about we're not going to see anything, and, uh, 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 and you know how much of it, and how's the mosaic going to be done, and all this stuff. And then, and then in we the end, case. yeah. We, and then, then the day you know we had processed it, and we all had our meeting. We sat, and it came up on the screen, and collectively we all went. <gasps> Whoa, that looks way better than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the guys out. did a beautiful job of the 3D. Movie. I agree. That's, that was an outstanding image. So we're going. We've got a few couple of minutes left. I just want to get a couple of real quick comments in from YouTube. Here is one. Well, no one from uh, Moondraw3 from YouTube. Well, no one else has said it, so I am going to. Happy birthday, Hubble. Thank you for the many wonderful images over the years, and hopefully many more to come. You have made this space geek happy. Same here. Great. Awesome. Happy birthday, Hubble. Okay, a couple of, couple of things on, uh, on Twitter that I just want to mention real quick. Lots of people uh, congratulating uh, uh, Hubble on its... Um, oh, there's an e-book. We should talk about that. There's yeah. an e-book that just come out. That's, that's on... Uh, where can I get that, Carol? Shoot, I wish I'd had that URL handy. I have that URL up. That's so why you drive the internet, Scott. You're awesome. Thank I you. I have that up here. So you drive the internet. Hear that? So this is our ebook and it is fantastic. And I am not saying it because I'm biased, but it is it really is amazing. And I've had so much great feedback from uh, many people out here. But uh, you can go to Hubble Twenty Fifth dot org slash images slash twenty six, or you can actually just see it from the main page. You can you can go there and explore and find it. And it's it's going to be in our resources. You can get it from the Apple iTunes Store. You can download it as a PDF and an EPUB. So for many different types of tablets, you can get this, and it is wonderful. Yeah. So definitely check it out, folks. We got a lot of tweets uh, from people. Uh, the uh, Canadian Space Agency. Uh, lots of people wishing every uh, Hubble a happy birthday. The uh, everybody's got posting pictures and. And, and just being wonderful all around in the Twitter sphere. So thank you all very much. I did want to share one thing from Twitter because it blew, it oh, really made me laugh. Thank you for not uh, letting me forget that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So uh, I put out a call to action and say, you know, let, let us know how Hubble has inspired you. And we've, we've got a lot of responses, but my favorite by far is from Paul. And I'm going to just screen share this real quick. Uh, Paul the Fourth. At Paul the Fourth on Twitter, 
has an amazing tattoo of the Hubble Space Telescope <laughs> oh my on goodness. his arm. That is hardcore. And, Look at that. Oh, my yeah. God. Whoa. That's so amazing. my hat is off to you, sir. That is fantastic. And, you know, talk about actually being inspired and, and going the full length. Now, you, you went through some pain for that, and that you sure is did. That wonderful. was not easy. But it's good work, too. Uh, whoever did yeah. that was really a good artist. That's awesome. Uh, it looks like it's at Tattoo Connor, so there you go. Ah, there you so, go. You want your very own space tattoo. Well, we're going to plug those guys because that is awesome. You, Thank you, Paul. That's outstanding. Okay, folks, we are out of time, sadly. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the special Hubble Hangout that we've had uh, for the 25th anniversary. Here's hoping Hubble will stand another 25 years, and uh, we... Uh, Hubble certainly has a lot of life left in it. Next week, we are hoping, we'll be back at a regular time, Thursday at 3 o'clock. We're hoping to do and schedule a hangout on, on uh, Frontier Fields, get an update with the latest. They, they are halfway through the six uh, clusters that they're looking at. We hope to have some people on board, but we have not confirmed it yet, so that may change. But we will be back next Thursday, 3 o'clock uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Thank you all for watching. Happy birthday, Hubble. Thank you, Scott and Carol. Yes. And congratulations, Desiree and Martin and Haley. Congra you guys are awesome. Great yeah. work. You guys yeah, are awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. All right, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep looking up. Keep looking up. <laughs>